Hey team, how's it going? Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the Console One mixing system and the integration with Logic Pro. This is a day that I never thought would come, but here we are. Sometimes things just happen and you got to kind of roll with the punches. Before we go ahead and start up, please make sure to subscribe. Got a lot of content coming soon, a lot of reviews, new plugins, yada yada. Okay, so here we are. You want to make sure that this is being recognized by your computer. So go into audio MIDI setup and inside of MIDI studio, you can see that the console one is being highlighted and the console one fader is being highlighted. This is something that you can also corroborate inside of Logic Pro under control surfaces. It's being recognized here, but to put it simply, as soon as you connect it, it does have internal communication with Logic Pro. And so it really is plug and play. I'm gonna hit X to go into the mixer. And I just wanna show you the beautiful relationship that happens here. The console one mixing system recognizes the all mixer within Logic Pro. So you've got the audio track type, preview, click, stereo out and master. And it also recognizes the single mixer. So here we have the audio track type, stereo and master. Obviously we can control the tracks, even if you don't have a console one plugin instantiated, this is what they call a limited track. A limited track is infinite. You can use as many as possible. That's not to say that you can do that with a console one plugin. It seems the limit with console one plugins are 200. After that, there seems to be some complications and there are some workarounds, but if you want to keep things really simple, let's keep the console one uh, plugins to a minimum of 200. And then what they call limited tracks are open. So you can do whatever you want. Um, so again, with limited tracks, you can control volume. You can control panning as well. When you start setting up buses, something else happens. So if I go into the send section here, create a bus, obviously an auxiliary is created and now we can select that. So it follows the track order, track names, and also the coloring system, which I thought was pretty great. So I'm gonna hold shift, grab onto send one, and you can control this like so. All of this, should be fully automatable. So if I open up the automation window and I start to automate volume, here is panning. So on and so forth. One of my favorite features is the ability to just simply touch the fader and select a track. That's something that can be established within the console one ecosystem. So if you go into your settings, you can set that up. So once you start to set up a significant amount of tracks, that's when this really starts to shine. So here you can select all the various tracks. And if you need to move to the next page, I can select the next bank, if you will. So it's easy to move around. Ideally, of course, you would have track stacks and that's how you would navigate this world. Now, if you really want to take advantage of this, you use the console one plugin, which I have instantiated now. So I'm going to turn that on. And this is where we get to really maximize on the technology on the left hand side, low cut, high cut, the ability to invert phase. You have an input gain, which is a really clever idea. So you can really kind of balance everything. A transient shaper section, which also kind of couples as a uh, saturator and gate and all sorts of stuff equalizer section which i find to be really robust and just easy to work with uh, i can make all kinds of errors and things still sound good like in the analog world a compressor the ability to side chain and use the filter as the uh, compression detection circuit so lots of good stuff here if i hold uh, shift, I can control the overall volume that's coming out of console one, but also control the DAW volume as well. So that is really neat. You can control width. 
which is amazing. Go full mono or just, you know, make something a little bit wider. And to the far right, you have the drive component, which you can change and you can control the character of that drive. So let's say I wanted to change the drive to Dirty Tape or a Chandler uh, Limited. You can do all that within that window. So lots of good stuff here. I can't tell you how excited I am about using this. Just, I just can't believe that we actually got here. If you look through the comment sections of a couple of videos that I've done, I basically said this day would never come and here we are. So just a lesson to you, just expect the unexpected and just kind of keep going for it and things will happen. So what exactly is console one controlling? So if we go into the settings within console one, you can see that it's controlling the DAW itself, the track number, track selection. So if you ever wanted to turn any of that off, you can do that within that menu there. And then one more thing to consider is to turn off all internal solo and mute. And that of course is going to give you the ability to work with the hardware while not kind of having any complications with the software. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I am absolutely in love with this whole digital uh, system. And just a shout out to SoftTube for making this happen. I will be doing a review on the console one mixing system and the SSL UF8 pretty soon here. So go ahead and stay tuned. And I will be giving away a free plugin to whoever is the 4,000th sub on the channel. Uh, it's been a long climb and now we're almost to 4,000 subscribers. So thank you so much uh, for this great opportunity. So all you gotta do is just comment 4,000 in the comments section and I'm giving away uh, Telefy by Black Saw Audio. So if you're interested in getting that, just type in the word 4,000, just type in the numbers 4,000 uh, and we can see who's gonna get this free plugin. So anyhow, thank you guys so much. Console One Fader Mixing System, I give it a thumbs up. Absolutely incredible. No cons at this time. Oh yeah, and one more thing before I forget, if it's not working, you have to plug in into an ample source. So either directly into the computer, uh, if you have some kind of hub, make sure that the USB hub is powerful enough. Otherwise, this thing is simply not going to have enough juice to power up. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Take care of yourselves. Stay up.